Hi, I'm Shira Karpow. And I'm Shana Gaunt, and we're board certified behavior analysts. At How To ABA, we provide practical resources, community, and support to ABA professionals. In each episode of our podcast, we will be having real conversations with real people sharing real stories about ABA. We'll share relevant strategies and actionable tips that will make us all better ABA practitioners. It's the ABA content you need that you're not going to learn in a textbook. Hi, everyone. Uh, Today on the podcast, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. Um, Something that we do within our community is always try to support each other and, you know, talk about the things that work, but also the things that don't work. And Shane and I have also had our share of experiences that are some of our you know, biggest failures and some of our biggest successes. And so we thought that we would talk about that today. What are our biggest failures and our biggest successes? Um, so, Shana, do you want to start? Oh, wow. Pass it off to me first. <laughs> Thanks, Shira. I was hoping for a model. <laughs> um, you know, it's hard to talk about your biggest failures because, you know, a lot of the times I try and block them from my mind so that I can just move on. Um, but at the same time, it's really great to be able to recognize your failures and be able to learn from them and being able to um, talk about them as well so that other people can be educated and maybe either have some advice for you or learn from your mistakes and, and what you've done differently. So, you know, when I think about my biggest failures, you know, there's there's a few students who come to mind, um, and I don't mean that the students are failures. It means like what I did with the students were didn't work, um, and it's it's tough. You know, it's uh, we've probably all got those kids on our caseload who keep us up at night, um, and in particular, I've got two. Um, One of them was one of my very first clients and uh, one of my first clients when I was a BCBA and he um, was an awesome kid. And, you know, looking back, I think about how many interests he had and his motivation and he had such cool skills. Like he was able to um, shape clay into dinosaurs and he would make these elaborate dinosaur pictures. And it was awesome. You know, he knew all the dinosaurs and all the facts about dinosaurs by the time he was five or six. And you know what we did? We said, you know what? He can't work. He, he can't use that anymore. He, he, we, we took away his clay. You know, we would have him work for, um, you know, the dinosaurs, but a lot of the time he would get the answer wrong. So he, he didn't get to use those dinosaurs or he didn't get access to those dinosaurs very much. And, you know, I look back on that and I think that it, it just breaks my heart because, you know, he was a kid. He learned, he learned a little bit, but he didn't flourish and he didn't thrive under my leadership. And um, it's, and I think I look back and go, okay, well, what was my learning experience on that? Um, it was really because we didn't, you know, um, build him up, you know, we didn't say, wow, like you really love this. You took a special interest in this. Let's use that interest and let's build it up further. Um, and I, and I missed that. I missed his motivation completely. And and I still look back on that and go, oh gosh, like, uh, I need to learn from that. And, um, thank goodness I did learn from that. Um, you know, he was one of the first kiddos I said, like I said, you know, who I consulted to as a BCBA. And, uh, you know, I, I now look at kids and go, okay, what is their unique interest? Do they have a unique interest and how can we build that into the ABA program? Not how does he work for it, but how can we build that in and how can we build that up as a strength? Um, because I look at this other kiddo and he could have been, um, probably a paleontologist or something. He was that smart, um, and really into all of that stuff. Wow. Um, yeah, that, that, that's heartbreaking, but, um, similarly, uh, my, one of my least shining moments was also early on when, um, I was consulting in a home-based situation to a family and they were trying to transition their son to school. And I had seen the child at school cause he was in a, like a typical, you know, kindergarten preschool class. I don't even remember. And I, you know, at the time there must've been like 30 kids in the class, one teacher is completely overwhelming. And in my, you know, not to humble opinion, it was like, he should not be in that class. And, um, there was a, a meeting the parents and the school board where they were trying to, you know, the agenda of the school board was to transition him into um, a more of a, you know, developmentally delayed class or, a, you know, a more specialized class where he would be amongst other special needs students. And I was, you know, all for that. And I went into the meeting um, with 
really in line with, with the school board when it was the parents felt very, very strongly that they wanted to keep him in the regular class, you know, despite the fact that maybe he's not learning as much as we would like him to be, or maybe he's not, um, you know, successful by whatever, you know, however you define that he was around typical kids. And that was really important to the parents. And, um, you know, looking back, I think that I was like a little bit too, condescending um, in the meeting and thinking that like I knew what was better and not allying with the parents and instead allying with the school board and making that, you know, very clear. Um, you know, in my head, I was thinking like I wanted what was best for the child and like it was really much better that he'd be out of this class because he wasn't successful in that class. So like put him in a, in a separate class. Um, but, you know, experience has taught me a lot. And some of the parents that I felt were at the time just frustrating because like they were such advocates, you know, looking back, you realize how much that's paid off when like at the time it's frustrating. And at the time it just feels like they're like, you know, yelling and screaming and no one's listening. Um, if we could ally with those parents, you see the benefit of that in a couple of years. And I really think even if, whether or not I was right and whether or not it was the right place for him or was not, um, it was not my place to overstep what the parents wanted. And I should have allied with them and supported them and, you know, just been there with whatever decision that they make. Um, even though I thought I knew better, <laughs> I think experience has taught me that I don't always know better. Um, and that there's so much more to the picture than like, you know, just the ABA piece. And you have to look at the whole child and the whole family and, you know, the school and, and everything that that encompasses. And it's not just about like my little, you know, myopic view of the situation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's tough, Shira, but I've been there too. Um, not necessarily with the school board, but just in terms of parent goals. And, you know, one thing that I've learned over the years is, you know, I start my meetings, I start all of my, hi, nice to get to know you meeting um, with, Hey, what are your goals for your child? Um, great. Give me your goals. Give me your top goals. And regardless of whether I start my meetings with that or not, um, sometimes I don't listen to those goals. And we really need to, as BCBAs, be able to write those goals down and put them somewhere like in a big mirror and go, okay, even though those aren't my goals, this is the parent's goals. Um, I had a parent goal one time of just, I want my kid to be able to say, I love you. All I want. My God, your, your kid doesn't even talk. How can I, how can I get him to say, I love you? And we did everything else and we built, you know, built up his vocabulary, you know, what have you. And we still didn't teach him. I love you. Like that was such a simple thing that I could have done to let the parents know, you know, that we were compassionate and we were really listening to them. And I, I didn't do it. Um, it's, it's one of those things you really need to listen to parents and, um, remind yourself on a daily basis that parents do know best. And it's really hard. I, all the time, you know, I I'll do, well, no, no, no. Like I know for a fact that, you know, manding is way better than this, or, you know, even if I teach him how to say, I love you, he's not going to mean it. So why, why do you want that? Shana, it's a parent goal. Like Shana, just, just, just do it. <laughs> But the important part is also that like we're allowed to have failures and like we have to learn from them. So like we have to we have to be OK with that. And like we're, you know, a work in progress. We're constantly evolving. Um, our field is doing better. We're doing better as practitioners. And it's only a failure if we don't learn from it. So, you know, the next time I was in that type of meeting, like you bet I acted differently. And so in that way, it's it's a learning experience. And so I think we allow ourselves to to have those, too. Um, which is really important. Okay, moving on to happier can talk, things. <laughs> can we talk about successes? I, I could probably uh, name a million failures. So I really don't want to. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about, you know, how we would describe successes. And we could talk about successes as, you know, the kids that have graduated from ABA and were in typical schools and went to college and got professions. And those are huge successes. And those are really important. But I think that we know, um, you know, from being in the field that how you define success is completely subjective. And I think we have to change our definition of success because what's successful for one child is not going to be success for another child. And so while we have those big successes, we also have lots of little successes and, you know, things like successfully toilet training, you know, an individual who the parents never thought that child would be independent with. You know, I had a student who um, not only was not toilet trained, I think she was about nine, eight or nine at the time, um, but she also had, you know, kidney issues. So like her chances of even 
you know, having those feelings that she would need to, you know, need to eliminate were so slim and they didn't even know if she'd ever be able to be toilet trained, you know, from the doctor's perspective. Um, and, and we trained her and that was a huge success because her quality of life now is that she can take herself to the bathroom and she can be independent with that. And even though she may need some help at some times, um, it's just so much more respectful that she could do that on her own. Um, so that's a huge success. That's a massive success, Shira. You know, it's teaching somebody a life skill like that. Not only is it a life skill, but it gives her dignity. You know, she may be destined for a group home, but you know what? She won't have to ever be naked in front of somebody or in front of a stranger in any situation like that. And that's incredible. Um, and you're right. You know, I've, I've got clients who, you know, have said, Hey mom, like, does my ABA therapist really need to come over today? I just want to go play with my friends. And that's an absolute success story. That's huge. Um, you know, one of my clients, um, is now a BCBA and I, that's incredible. I love that. Um, it's kind of scary that I've been in the field this long that I can see that progression. Um, but yeah, those are success stories, but other success stories, um, are almost better than that. You know, in the, the success stories of kids who quote unquote, didn't make it. I hate that word. I, I hate that phrase. Um, I was in a meeting the other day, uh, my client is 26. And uh, when he was younger, uh, the doctor actually said, you know, good luck. He's not going to talk. He, you, yeah, there's no, there's no institutions here, but you know, you might as well start looking now for a group home because that's where he's destined to go. And that was horrible of that doctor to say. And uh, it really, gave the family, um, obviously didn't give the family any false hope, but like it, it was horrible. Can you imagine hearing that as a parent? Um, but it really, that parent went out and fought that parent went out and researched to the nines, um, to see what's going to happen and everything else. And, you know, this kiddo, like I said, is older now. Um, he talks, he doesn't talk in, you know, maybe three word phrases. I would say he talks in, he understands probably two, three-step instructions. Um, but he said when he was 20 or so, he said, I move out at 25 with his thumbs up in the air. I move out at 25. And he, he had his thumbs up and that was his goal. And um, he was moved out of the house by 24. And that was a huge success story because it was his goal. It wasn't his parents' goal. It was his goal. He wanted to move out. And yes, he has people, you know, he's got his own place and he's got people who come and see him, you know, at night and, and stay with him, what have you. Um, but he cooks his own meals. He follows the schedule. He buys his own groceries. He's got a list. He adds things to his list. Um, technology has really helped with him because he's got apps and he's got reminders on his phone and everything else that pop up. Um but the really big thing is, is that he he's doing it like he's he's almost independent at living and uh, he met his goal. And to me, that's a huge success story. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, there's nothing like helping an individual become more independent than, you know, somebody ever thought. Um, however, you define that independence. I think that that's really rewarding. Um, another success that I'm going to throw in there is when people that I, you know, work with who had no idea what ABA was or, you know, whatever their previous career was um, and decide to go into ABA and even get a BCBA because of, you know, our interactions or, you know, the work that they see we do. And so that's, that to me is a huge success because it just means that, um, you know, we're doing something positive and people are inspired to come on board the ABA train, <laughs> which is always awesome. <laughs> It also speaks wonders to you, Shira, because people are feeding off of your enthusiasm and your mentorship and saying, oh, wow, like, look at how exciting this field can be. And look at like Shira's broke this down and made this into um, understandable steps. I was joking around today, Shira and I both picked up our Cooper Heron Heward textbook. And I was like, I think I have PTSD from looking at this book. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when you train staff, you're able to break it down into really manageable steps and they'll hey, it's really exciting. Yeah, that's a really nice part for me. Um, okay, and I'm sure there will be, you know, in another, I don't know, should we give ourselves 100 episodes or, or less till we have more successes and failures to discuss? Right? I mean, I could probably go on more and more about, you know, successes as I think of them. But yeah, it's true. We have a tendency to harp on our failures and I could like probably have a longer list of failures um, that I can talk about because, you um, 
that's what we we tend to go to, right? And uh, you know, it's one of those things that you know, as a supervisor, I always say, okay, you know, you fill out this feedback form about yourself, and I'll fill it out about you as well. And a lot of the time, you know, staff will write like a huge long list of you know what they deemed as you know their in, you know, incompetencies, I hate that word, but, you know, and, and I've got one thing on the list, you know, I, I didn't see anything else. And, you know, that's the same thing with me. If someone said, Hey, Shana, you know, fill out this form of, you know, things that, you know, you think you can improve on, you know, my, my list is huge. Um, whereas other people don't always, you know, look at, they, they look at that and go, well, why that that's actually not too bad. And we really do need to start turning our thinking around and saying, you know, let's focus in on the successes. Yeah. And also the success is going to be your reinforcement. So like when you do feel burnt out and you do feel like it's not going well and those failures are going to happen, like for sure, um, in one way or another, whether they're big failures or small failures, but if you can tap into, um, how you're successful and however you define that, whether it's by, you know, teaching a student, a new skill or inspiring a staff member or relating to a family, however, that, however you define that success for yourself is going to be the reinforcement that like really gets you, keeps you going through all those failures. Um, so it's important to find those success. Successes. It's crazy. In ABA, we always talk about, okay, when you're dealing with negative behavior, instead of harping on the negative behavior, you know, reinforce the positive behavior, look to the positive behavior, even have your staff collect data on the replacement behavior, the positive behavior, positive, positive, positive. And then, you know, ourselves, we're like, well, look at my failures. Look, I haven't done this. I haven't done this. I haven't done this. So um, yeah, it's, it's really great to be able to go, yeah, look at all our successes. So we should compile this year and maybe just to start a gratitude journal. Should that be our challenge to each other is start? I don't know. Another thing to do. <laughs> I'll put it on my to-do list and we'll see if we get I'll to put it on my to-do list. Maybe it'll get done eventually. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so we will definitely revisit this. So we have some more stories on our successes and failures, um, hopefully more successes. Um, but please share share with us what yours are. Maybe not your failures. I'd we'll love to hear your successes. Yeah. Let's focus in on that. Let or us, what you've learned from your failures, not your failures themselves. Unless you really feel like venting and then go for it. Um, yeah, so let us know what your biggest successes are um, and what your, the lessons are that you've learned, um, whether you've been in the field for one year or 10 years or 20 years. I think we all have a lot to learn from each other um, and to continue to just be better people and better practitioners um, every single day. Thanks for joining today's conversation. Wherever you get your podcast, please go and subscribe, rate and review so others can find out about us too. For more from How to ABA, including free resources and ABA materials, visit our blog at howtoaba.com and make sure that you're following us on social media for more practical tips and updates.